at this church. We're about to get started with our national Wednesday service. I appreciate you joining us online at home. We started in just a minute. I just want you to know that you are prayed for. You're right here in our midst. We appreciate you. Just type in the chat where you're watch, watching. I'm going to be able to get back with you. Thank you.
somebody, maybe the most senior person ever here. Maybe somebody that's one and somebody that's 101. And there's people in between, so you don't have to see these things here. So, is this all loud enough, John? Can you have no, it? It's not on. It's not on. Yeah. There we go. Okay, now you can have it. I'm saying. I was saying we'll have uh, probably the youngest person to get ashes tonight. It's going to be Zayden, and our most senior person is Francis. So we're delighted to have that. Somebody's won, somebody's hired one. So, yes. Well, that's, what, what a blessing. And to be the community of faith, that each one of us understands and sees the mystery of Christ. We don't completely understand it. We know Christ in our presence. And we know that there's a time for us to take time to be holy, just like that song was saying, take time and invest time in that. And so I want to read you a passage of scripture from 2 Corinthians. And let me just tell you, we've been studying the letters to the church in Corinth, which is what this is. We've been studying that in our Bible study class, our disciple. And these were churches that were spread out across the Mediterranean. And some of the churches were doing, they, they each needed a special message from Paul. And I just got to tell you, the Corinthians were kind of known. They were a port city. They were, had a lot of sailors coming. Nothing against sailors. I know we've got some sailors, some retired sailors here. So, but they were, they were kind of wild, okay? And they, they kind of needed some guidance, some spiritual guidance, um, to kind of guide them into the right direction. So we have, um, again, this time of, of, of Lent or repentance that some of them, that each of us, whether we think we're wild or not wild, we each... There's thoughts, words, and deeds. We need to look at changing and correcting and being more in line with who God is and how God wants to guide us. And so the letter from the, to the Church of Corinthians is very appropriate. It says, we implore you, 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 20, verse 20, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We get that. Now is the day. The day to turn toward God, to receive that blessing. Now is the day of salvation. So friends, we're here this evening for this brief service, the imposition of ashes, as a reminder of two things. We each kind of start with the letter R. One is to repent. Repent, that is to turn back to God. This is the time of your salvation to turn back to God. And the second one, our word, is to receive. Receive the grace of Jesus Christ in your life. So repent and receive. That's what this is about tonight. And these ashes that we see here uh, were made by our youth last Wednesday night. There's nothing like teenagers and fire. And get them together, okay? So we did some teenage work and some fire last week. We burned up all the old palm branches that were from last year, last April, our Palm Sunday that we had. It was, it was good. Well, it was meaningful, you know. And also we could see kind of all those palm branches came down to just be a small mortar and pestle here full of ashes. And it kind of symbolizes, when you think about it, the, the palm branches were something that they were celebrating at the time of Jesus coming in to enter into Jerusalem. And it was a big celebration like for a king and you're waving these palm branches, these green branches that, that seemed to be so, uh, so celebratory. You know, it's a special event. And then to see the contrast with a little vial cup of ashes that symbols of death. Yet in that tension, we find ourselves. There's those really high moments with the palm branches and waving them and thinking, oh, this is great. And then there's the mourning, the loss, the death. And there's a realization somewhere in there that we live between these two extremes of abundant life and waving the palm branches and the reality of our own mortality that's there. 
So this is a reminder of those things. A reminder, and when I put the ashes on your forehead, I'll say, uh, ashes from ashes, you came from ashes, and to ashes you shall return. But with Jesus, there is so much more. There is life, and life to the full, and eternal life with Christ. So this is the day of salvation. Ash Wednesday invites us to pause, to take a breath, to reflect, and to repent, and turn back to God. There's a breath prayer I want to encourage you to do. I just want to ask you just to, just to take a breath for a moment and, uh, and receive this. And that is, breathe in, and say, Lord Jesus, under your breath, Lord Jesus. Then breathe out, and say, Son of God. Lord Jesus, Son of God. Then breathe in saying, have mercy on me. Okay. Have mercy on me. And breathe out saying, a sinner. So, Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus, of God. Have mercy on me, sinner. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount, talks about practices, how to do things the way God would call us to do, like giving to the needy. It says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. On the subject of fasting, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they dis disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face, so it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting. But only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Then about treasures in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, but where thieves and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let's now prepare <clears throat> our hearts before our Creator and our Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality <coughs> and penitence. So we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As we prepare to receive these ashes, I'm going to ask you to please come forward, probably starting with these sections over here, and this section, and this section, and this section. If you like, I can come to you. I would be glad to come to you if that would help. And I can place the ashes either on your forehead, if you like, or on your hand. Just hold out your hand, the back of your hand. And after, please return to your seat and continue to be in an attitude of prayer and reflection as others receive their ashes.
And then we will close with a song and a benediction. So we can start with uh, Taylor, would you mind me going to you first? Would that be okay? And then you can come back and be able to play.
of those songs, but my notes are all covered with ashes. So I can't tell you. <laughs> Taylor, you know where that song is, right? <laughs>
of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.